Okay, um, so I was gonna do some some video game stuff, but I thought it may take a little detour uh, to talk about news that Milo Yiannopoulos' book has been canceled. Uh, Milo uh, has been making a name for himself lately uh, outside of games. Uh, his his sort of rise in uh, popularity and fame and controversy, of course, was on the back of gamers uh, through the Gamergate scandal movement, whatever you want to call it. Um, Milo, you know, I've spoken with him n multiple times on the phone, podcasts. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm friends with Milo or know Milo very well, but uh, we both covered Gamergate together from uh, very different points of view, uh, very different sides of the political spectrum, and with a very different approach to sort of how, uh, how to tackle an issue like Gamergate. Um, I think, you know, my perspective was sort of a consumer-friendly uh, look at sort of the, the causes and the roots of all this anger and mistrust in the gaming community, which I traced back to, you know, various other scandals, uh, controversies, Mass Effect 3, Devil May Cry, and, and, and you know, a number of different things that set the the, the people who play games at odds with the people who write about them and cover them in the press. Uh, Milo came into Gamergate with a very different um, set of goals and bogeymen. Uh, Milo's goal, I think, through Gamergate quickly became uh, elevating himself and his popularity and his brand. And that's fine. Uh, I'm not making a judgment statement on that. We all work on our brand. We all try to promote ourselves. Milo is very skilled at this. Uh, he is a very talented troll. Uh, he, his methodology, his idea of how to sort of uh, continue Gamergate uh, was was ironically sort of similar to many of the people he criticized, which is to constantly inflame this sort of stupid war between SJWs and gamers, feminists, and, and uh, you know, just your average everyday uh, player of games. So Milo, like many SJWs, was all about uh, inflaming the controversy, making it bigger than it actually was, giving it a life of its own, and ultimately this was just really good timing for him because Breitbart, uh, then became sort of the center of the Donald Trump campaign's co pro positive coverage. Steve Bannon, the editor of Breitbart, uh, went on to become Trump's right-hand man, or puppet master. Uh, and so, you know, Milo, uh, his, his rise to fame was then just catapulted on the back of Gamergate, on the back of uh, Donald Trump's campaign. It was all just sort of a perfect storm for a troll like Milo. Um, Whereas I, you know, I just, I still just play games and write about games. Um, uh, anyways, you know, you, so Milo has, has sort of, he's, he's gotten very, very internet famous. I, I guess you should say his book deal, which was just canceled based on some statements that, uh, that were videotaped of him making about uh, pedophilia, uh, which were construed as being pro-pedophilia. And I'm not so sure that that's really what he meant. And I, I certainly hesitate to judge uh, the contents of his heart and his intentions. Um, and I know he's claiming that he was taken out of context. But here's the thing. Um, Milo, his, his, his rise in fame and popularity is based entirely around his poor treatment of other people. And not giving anyone really on the other side of his political spats, the benefit of the doubt. This is a person who's trolling and uh, firebranding and, you know, people, they say he's a provocateur. Well, his, what he does is lash out at people, mock people, rile people up against others and not give anyone the benefit of the doubt that, that is on the other side of his ire. So it's not surprising that people aren't giving him the benefit of the doubt in return. I'm going to do it. I'm going to give Milo the benefit of the doubt. 
I don't think he believes half the things he says. I think that he is first and foremost about himself, about Milo, about his brand. Uh, I think that's eerily similar to Donald Trump, but I'm just not even going to go there. I just, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't like a lot of things that he says. I, I find his approach to things like transgender people, uh, feminists, lesbians, and any number of other groups very off-putting and very unkind, and that's just not my style, I guess. Um, I don't I don't like to talk that way about people who, it, who I disagree with. I, you know, hardcore conservatives and right-wingers and pro-war people and all that, they all are just people. Like, they're people with lives and families and hopes, dreams, desires, fears. The whole, everyone is complicated and everyone deserves our, at least our benefit of the doubt, if not our compassion, um, if not our time of day. Uh, so anyways, that's my take on Milo. I'm just going to just seg right into PewDiePie because I think this, this issue of trolls going too far really kind of winds winds through this discussion and PewDiePie of course uh, the, the number one YouTube star a uh, young uh, very popular with the young people uh, guy um, who, who used to do more stuff with games just kind of like Milo um, got in a lot of hot water doing some some uh, some very poor humor I don't even want to call it humor PewDiePie's uh, Nazi jokes and dressing up as a Nazi and all of this stuff. Again, I, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't think in any way PewDiePie is actually anti-Semitic. I think this was all blown out of proportion, but I think where PewDiePie has screwed up is, is he, he doesn't have the artfulness or tact of a real comedian. I want to compare him to South Park because I, th I think PewDiePie is a fan of South Park. He's, he makes voices like South Park sometimes. I don't know. I, I used to watch a lot of South Park and South Park is vulgar, offensive, controversial, all those things. But those guys get away with it uh, because they're funny, because they can do parody, because they understand the art of spoof. And um, so they can say things that are outrageous and, and they can do things that, are, that rustle people's feathers, but no one ever says, oh, well, we have to cancel them because they're anti-Semitic. Even though they have a lot of Jew jokes, uh, you know, Nazi jokes, all that same stuff that PewDiePie got in trouble for, but it's, it's partly because they are funny and you know that there's a message there. PewDiePie's message seems to be, I'm gonna troll people and then when they get upset, I'm gonna complain that the media is against me. I'm sorry, I cannot stand this concept that the media is against anyone. The media is not a monolithic group. I am part of the media. PewDiePie is part of the media. Milo is part of the media. So are countless other local journalists, national journalists, talking heads, uh, provocateurs, uh, radio jockeys. I mean, everyone from Sean Hannity to Jake Tapper. They're all the media. The media is like any other group of people. It's diverse and it has a wide set of views and goals and everything else. No, the media is not against PewDiePie. The, the, the media largely doesn't even know about him. And some people probably don't like him or don't care for him. But, but generally speaking, I think this is a, an act of self-pity to, cl to claim that the media is out to get you. It's what Donald Trump does also. And here we keep tying back to Donald Trump, this sort of self-pitying, oh, the media is out to get me. No. Are people blowing this up way too big? Yes. Is, is PewDiePie anti-Semitic? No. Was that funny or tasteful or appropriate? Probably not. Um, especially hiring those guys to go hold that horrible sign up. I mean, there's just, if you're not, if you're just going to troll and you're not going to be funny and you're not going to have a, a, a message behind it that's worthwhile, then, I mean, I don't know. It's, are you, is, what is the point? What's the point of what you're doing? Um, that's what I would ask PewDiePie. What's the point of this? And, um, you know, I'd, and, and Milo too, what's the point? What are you achieving? Are you making the world a better place? Are you furthering, you know, whatever it is you believe? What do you believe? Do you believe in anything? I, I, what, is, what is the point of all this trolling? Trolling has its limits. And it almost feels to me like it's lazy. Like the beauty of South Park, again, is that they're not just trolling everybody. They're actually 
coming up with a story, a message, really vulgar humor to tie it all together, but it's funny and it matters. I mean, they're, 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 you know, whether you, whatever you think about global warming, their episode, The Day Before the Day After Tomorrow, is a really great spoof of both that, that terrible movie, but also a great sort of uh, examination of, of maybe people overreacting to the threat of global warming. Now, whether or not you agree with it, it's a funny episode. Uh, and, and that's where I think trolling has its limits. It just doesn't, doesn't capture what humor can capture. And so when PewDiePie goes and, and does something that appears anti-Semitic, if it was funny, if it was spoofing somehow something, then I think people would be a lot more sympathetic. But and maybe that's what he's trying to do. And maybe I just don't get PewDiePie's humor. And I will fully admit to not really getting PewDiePie's humor. It's, I guess I'm just twice as old as the people who watch him. Um, uh, and, you know, I can't help that. <laughs> I'm trying, okay? Um, so since we're talking about Nazis with PewDiePie and Milo and everything, we, should, we may as well just talk about punching Nazis. Um, for some reason, this is actually a question in the national debate. And I think it ties into more like this idea of censorship, stifling free speech. Um, we have both the you know, instances of, of Nazis being punched and you have like uh, Berkeley where Milo's uh, talk was canceled because of rioting and destruction of property and all that stuff. So my view on punching Nazis is you punch Nazis if they're invading your country, starting a war, you know, Indiana Jones had the right idea. The, the, we were at war with Hitler and he had to punch some Nazis. Great. It's the perfect time to punch Nazis. But in peacetime, in a free country where something like freedom of speech is enshrined in our values and our culture, not just our laws, but our culture, you don't punch people because they have re reprehensible views. You know, if they're going to hurt you or somebody you love and you're defending yourself, then yes, punch away. But the same thing, you know, the same thing goes with Berkeley. Let people with terrible ideas and terrible views speak. Let their views out into the light. You know, there's this, there's the phrase, sunlight is the best disinfectant. And that's, that is the power of speech. People with ugly views and ugly words and terrible ideas, if you let them say those things and let people really hear them, don't make martyrs out of them. Don't, don't punch them. Don't, don't burn down, you know, property or destroy cars. Or Let these ugly ideas out, and sunlight will be the best disinfectant. I mean, this is not hard. Free speech. The, the one of the reasons it's so beautiful and so necessary and important is because, you know, our, our real fight is is the battle of ideas. The pen is mightier than the sword. You know, and I think democracy and de the democratic republic we have set up is better than communism, better than fascism. The ideals that were that were enshrined in our constitution by the founding fathers, the ideals of the of the enlightenment, uh, of reason, and and the the ideals that 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 come from just you know many cultures, Western Western culture, but also many Asian cultures. The idea of of loving your neighbor, of turning the other cheek. Uh, all these things are powerful and are far more powerful than a punch, far more powerful than a riot. I mean, there's a time and place for all of this. There is a time and place for violence. There's a time and place for resistance. And, and I don't think there's anything wrong with protesting, with letting it known that you don't agree with something that someone like Milo is saying, but let him speak at your campus. You know, let people like this talk. What has gotten Milo in trouble? What ended his book deal? His own words. His own words, you know, and he says they're taking a context, maybe so, but it's his words that, that have sunk this deal, not the protesters. And, and it's, you know, it's a battle of ideas and that's where we should engage all the time, not stifling other people's ideas, but letting them, letting them go to, go to battle in the arena of ideas and of values. And, uh, you know, I don't think the good guys always win. I don't think the right side always wins, but it's not that simple either. And, and 
You know, I just, I would hope that smart, thinking, thoughtful, compassionate people would have enough confidence in the, in the power of their own ideas to not be cowed or frightened by these terrible, horrible white nationalists and Nazis and enemies of, of what, our, what our culture stands for. Um, so that's what I have to say about that. You know, we've covered all the bases. Milo, PewDiePie, a little bit of Trump, uh, free speech, punching Nazis. I think my work here is done. Um, you know, and I, I will have more to say on this because I'm sure I forgot like half of the shit I was going to say. But right now I want to go to the store, I want to get some, some beer, and I want to play some Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Because whatever happened with Gamergate, whatever happened with Trump and with, you know, whatever happened with all that shit, I am still a gamer and a game journalist and that's what I do. So that's my thoughts. Thanks for watching. Peace.